All right, here we are live. There's Andrew leaning in. Disembodied hands in the air. What? what we don't charades. What? Hey, there's the chat room too. Welcome to another Friday edition of Titan Twitch. I'm Rob McCallum, joined once again by my good desk pal, <laughs> Glenn Stanaway. Hello, everyone. And uh, Rob's good desk pal. <laughs> What would you? We're on. We're, we're the island now. Yeah, we've. Rob and I recently moved desks so that we're we have our, our workstations back to back, and uh, it's impossible for Rob to get up his chair now without knocking one of the <laughs> probably thirty collectibles I have sitting on my. I almost brought my desk over. I almost brought my Funko Pops in today. I opened them last night. My Darkwing Duck and Launchpad and Quack ones. They're pretty cool. Because you knew I was just. I, I didn't. Cro it didn't not cross my mind that you may do that. Um, you know what? You know what our setup kind of reminds me of. What does it remind you of, brother? That walk this way video with Aerosmith and Run DMC, <laughs> with the wall between them. At some point, I just may break through your computer monitors and say, "Walk this way." No. I look forward to it. Okay. What uh, What are we talking about this week? Or I guess that's my problem to figure out. It is your problem to figure out. Okay. Well, let's see if I can figure that out. Hey, look at this. Twitch questions. So once again, we've compiled a list of questions that you've sent us uh, through Facebook and Twitter. Hey, well, it's Bill the Cat. More or less, and Bill the Cat. Welcome back. Bill. That's awesome. Uh, first question. Are you showing us Tiny Rails Steam this week? We are not. We are not. We are not. We, uh, we, uh, we had some discussion about this earlier today, and there's still a couple of UI things that we want to do before we feel totally ready to unveil it so okay we're gonna hold off so maybe week. maybe next week let tune the, in let the anticipation build tune in and find out we did have a question on facebook asking why the stars are in front of the moon uh and here's a good time to kind of pick that up the answer is because it's a bug okay and what is the status of that bug getting sorted it's on our list it's on the list <laughs> folks it is on the list. Okay. Um, related to Tiny Rail Steam, what is the state of the Steam version? As Glenn picks his gems and his services. I just want to be able to. Uh... Right. Gesture in the camera. I want, to, I want to let obstacles be able to clear on their own. Uh, the state of Steam Tiny Reels is that we're working hard to get it to the level we feel it needs to be at to to be appropriate for the Steam audience. So um, it's playable at this point. It's very fun, and it's certainly feeling uh, like a different game. And it's feeling uh, much tighter over the past couple of weeks as we've been spending a lot of time really polishing it up and brushing it up. But uh, we are certainly our most vocal critics, I think. So we want to uh, we want to ensure that it's it's hitting our standard before we uh, we talk about it too much or show it off too much, I guess. Before we started streaming, I did talk to uh, Mr. Jeff Owens. I mean Jeff Evans about some information that we can share with everybody regarding Steam. Excellent. He says that we're allowed to announce that Tiny Rails Steam will officially be out in the public on July twenty eighth. I'm just kidding. I'm yes, you are. <laughs> Our product manager, Mr. Stanway, just had an aneurysm, folks. <laughs> August August 8th is the date, right? August 8th. Tuesday, August 8th, 2017. <laughs> Not to be confused with Wednesday, August 9th. That's true. Which we had a little bit of difficulty with earlier yeah. today. So there you go. Tiny Rail Steam, August 8th. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. To be totally honest, that's I, I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting it out in front of people and just seeing how the community reacts to it. And we know that we are going to get a lot of really valuable input from our Steam users on the game and, and a lot of the newer features that we're incorporating. And I'm really excited to see what players think of that. So, yeah, and so a lot of people that were concerned of late summer being September 19th. <laughs> two days before the beginning of fall. Not, not quite end of summer. You will still be poolside and able to take your laptop and play some Tiny Rail Steam. I Just think. be careful of water with electronics. 
That's a good safety tip, Mr. It, Stanley. It is. Thanks for looking out for all the players out there. I try. Um, a lot of big news happening this week for uh, Tiny Titan Studios, and one of the biggest regards uh, Tiny Rails, of course, and that is the ESRB has given Tiny Rails an E for Everyone rating. What does that actually mean? What does it actually mean? Uh, I just think it's a nice thing to be able to put on our marketing for the game, really. Sure. I, I think uh, I think ESRB ratings have become a very widely recognized uh, barometer of the content of a game for for a lot of game players and for a lot of parents especially. And uh, I feel good about being able to to say that we officially have an ESRB rating on the game and that we're able to, to put that on all of our branding for the, for the game and, and share that with anybody who's potentially uh, thinking about buying it. I think it uh, makes us put on those big boy pants, like most game companies should. You know, when they have their games officially rated, it means you're kind of, you're up there at the dance, you're doing the thing, you're not just kind of fly by night, and we take our work pretty seriously here at Tiny Tiny, even though our games are super fun. We want to be as legit as possible, so when a mom or a dad sees that their son or daughter is looking for a new game to play, it'll say prominently that this is rated E for everyone, so we think that's a good thing across the board, yeah? You ever, did you ever pay attention to ESRB ratings when they started coming out? <laughs> I, I mostly did because uh, I was working in game retail at the time, so it was pretty important for me to be aware of that stuff. I bet. So yes. I always looked for like you know the M titles, of course, because that they, M for cool. Isn't that what it stood for? M for cool? I don't know. Mmm, cool? Mmm, it's cool. I uh, I actually was an EB employee during the infamous controversy where Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was released as a rated M title and then was changed to an adults only rating because somebody didn't take something out of the game that they should have. Ah. Well, we hope nobody looks at our mutilated nope. cow secrets and no. stuff like that. None of that stuff in Tiny Rails. Yeah, none of that stuff. Tiny Rails. Um, we, we teased on social media that a certain car package was available. Is that something we can pull up here, do you think? Or are we going to cause our stream to crash? Let's, uh, if I click this, what's going to happen? Let's find out. Look at that. It's, it's a care care package. package. Okay, so that's not what we were nope. teasing. We were teasing... Let's, not, let's, the, uh, let's move on from that. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> that, the whole discussion. <laughs> Alright. Um, Here's a question about Dash Quest. I love Dash Quest, and I just want you to know, I just want you to update it so I can spend my money and win the game. Any comments on that? I'm not the Dash Quest producer. Rob. Apparently, I am you somewhat of a producer. The de facto yeah, producer on I'm a de facto producer. I am producing that game, thankfully, which is really cool, um, as we talked about last week. Flagship title to some degree. Um, I can say again, official. Official Tiny Titan news, release news, a new build of Dash Quest goes up this weekend. That will oh. see a new level cap. I didn't even know that. There you go. That's exciting news. Yeah, what are you doing with your super phone? I'm, I'm going to tweet about that exciting news. Okay. Uh, you'll see a new level cap, you will see some new weapons, and certain updated uh, UI visuals. And in the background, we've done some enemy balancing to help kind of with that new uh, player level cap. Look at this. Stanway here is telling the world about the Dash Quest update that's pending release. So it should hit Android first and then iOS a little bit after. Um, but it should be this weekend from what I hear. I want to thank the entire team for helping us get that together. And uh, finally, a much needed tweaks and dials and kind of behind the scenes push for, for Dash Quest. Which is great. You're not going to show me your tweet? No. Now I'm going to have to look Let's at the rest of the world. <laughs> No, you get to see it with the rest of the world. Here's one that you can answer. I'm not good at math, so hopefully you can help me with an honest answer here. If I'm going to spend money in Tiny Rails, should I buy gold or gems? Should you buy gold or gems? Uh, I would certainly say gems. I think there's a lot more flexibility in terms of what you can do with gems. For one thing, you could turn them into gold. Um, but I think what you'll find is while gold it seems like it is really important in the early stages of the game, uh, you'll find the gems are definitely more flexible long term. 
And you can buy car packs with them when they go on sale. You certainly can. I like that. Uh, you can buy cars normally through the train area with them as well. So I would argue that gems are the way to go by all means. Great. Um, we talked a little bit about Tiny Rails Steam already. Is What's the one feature that we've implemented that you like the most and feels like it's on mark? One feature we've implemented that I like the most, uh, I don't know if I can boil it down to one thing. There are a lot of really... Maybe not a feature, then one, one thing that we've added or modified or published. Trying to answer your question. And I'm changing the we've, question. We've added a lot of sort of small things collectively that do a lot to really make the world feel a lot more alive while you're playing. Uh, I, I know our big challenge when we started bringing Tiny Rails to Steam was we wanted, we wanted to give a PC player something that felt a little more active and more involved while they were playing, so we wanted to give it a little bit more of a sim bent on the PC than maybe the mobile version has. And we wanted to support a playstyle that wasn't similar to the mobile version where it's sort of duck in, chuck under train, do a couple of upgrades, leave, come back later on, do the same thing. So there are a lot of things collectively that aren't necessarily part of the same feature set that do that. So uh, I'm a really big fan of our new train maintenance system. Uh, your cars will generate gold for you if they're entertainment or food cars. And you can also, uh, you also need to repair and clean your cars to keep them in tip top condition and that will actually influence both regular passengers and VIP passengers boarding your train and affect your ability to earn income. Uh, you can adjust your ticket prices for anybody who wants to try and wheel and deal. Which is really bit. interesting because I got to play with that today. It was interesting to see how that worked. And uh, we did add a, we know we have our passenger reviews in the passenger menu and, and a lot of our players have commented on those and really love those. And we wanted to bring that into the main gameplay a little bit more as well. So we do have, uh, we do have a system uh, of emojis where uh, when you deliver your passengers to a station or passengers forward, you'll actually see these quick little pop-up style uh, reactions to different things on your train. So if your train's not in very good repair, you'll see a grumpy guy pop up and actually let you know that. Uh, if somebody's really happy with your ticket prices, you'll see a really ecstatic person pop up and do that. And I think those, uh, those turned out really, really well. And uh, I think they do a lot to sort of help complement those other features that we put in too. So there's a lot of little things like that that I feel like even if they're not dramatic wholesale re <laughs> rewriting of the game, I think they really do add a lot to the experience and they definitely make it feel a lot more alive when you're playing. Uh, we do have a question over here. We do. Oh, look at that. I'm a secret. I'm a secret. I found that today for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just spoil it for everyone else. Yeah, that's right. Um, Build the Cat asks, guys, is there any chance of a fill demand offline for one station while you're not actively You're not actively playing. We have talked about having a service that would automatically acquire cargo and or sell cargo and or potentially fill cargo demands for you. So we've talked about it, uh, whether or not we pull the trigger on it, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to, Brett's actively saying no in the chat. Say no a third time, Brett. <laughs> using <laughs> using <laughs> a different word. Okay, thank you. Not happening, yeah. So, uh, Brett's, Brett's now summoned uh, Candyman by saying no three times in the mirror. It's oh. an obscure reference for you. I'm looking for that man in the mirror. So Brett's saying no. Um, I, I, I understand why some people like the idea. I'm not a fan of it personally. I feel like the cargo game really should be an active element in the game. And I don't like the idea of it happening when somebody isn't playing. Uh, so we know that people are asking for it, or certainly some people are asking for it. Uh, we've had the conversation, but that's that's about where it's stopping at this point. Um, one of the features I like, and I, I don't think this is giving anything away, given you've talked about a lot of the big features that are coming to Steam mm -hmm. with the maintenance and cleaning, is I really like that sense of ownership you get right off early on in the tutorial with the deed. When grandfather, grandpa produces the, the deed to the train company where you get to name your train company. Because we discovered that at no point in Tiny Rails was the company ever named. So we thought, well you thought, it shouldn't be a problem to actually be able to add that name somewhere. Correct. Uh, I thought it would be a nice touch and everybody else agreed and uh, it actually becomes the name of your save file in the game as well. So you can have up to three save files on the PC version of Tiny Rails and uh, 
each one of them could have a different name if you wanted to. So if there's three people in your household who want to play the game and name their company something unique to themselves, uh, they certainly can. We have had a lot of fun testing that over the last several days trying to break the profanity filter that we have included for that feature. Yeah, I was wondering about what kind of filter. Try, try to work around that. Because I tried to just put some numbers in there and it wouldn't let me do it's, it. It's very specific about what you can use and what you can't use, but uh, there, there are reasons for that. Um, I'd like to think that at a point where, uh, I know we've, we've talked about the concept of social features before, and I'd like to think that in the long term that is something we'd like to include with Steam. So we wanted to try and, and, and sort of protect ourselves against the potential issues that might arise from people being able to see other people's current names and have them be uh, rampantly offensive. So, so we're doing our best to try and, uh, and and stop that at the source. Now, is there a secret unlock mechanism or cheat code that if you name your train company a certain thing, you get like unlimited gold, or it enters like developer debug mode, so you can kind of whirl around? At this point, we have no <coughs> dev name. That, the, uh, that would be a pretty cool way to do it, though. It would be a neat way to do it. The problem, of course, is that then it gets out there and you know, that people can do it. Well, that's why you can just update the build, right? Just saying. Just saying. So, here we go. Back to the questions at hand here. Um, apparently, Bill the Cat is asking for no more singing. So, you'll we'll have to cease. Yeah, cease and desist. But you did mention uh, we've been having fun playing Tiny Rails at home. I got to play it last night on my Mac. Did. Which we've only been saying PC. We have been only saying PC. Uh, we we were really excited about the idea of potentially bringing the game to Mac as well. We just really we were so focused on the PC version that we hadn't done any due diligence in terms of really examining the challenges of getting it on uh, on Mac as well. And as it turns out, um, the process really didn't seem all that complicated. So, yeah. So we do have a working build on Mac right now. I think we do want to spend a little bit of time and just make sure that we're comfortable with what the minimum specs need to be for it. We're comfortable with the way it's performing. Um, but uh, we would very much like to have a Mac version of it available as well. What's hilarious is because I'm a Mac guy and you've been asking everybody for feedback notes as often as possible. I'm like, I can't play it because you guys don't, don't have it on Mac. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrew, our QA lead, turns around and says, oh, I'll build you a Mac version. And now there's no excuse. For Macaloo not to have some feedback notes, so I do like to switch it up though, but it was really cool to play it on my 5K iMac in my basement last night and just kind of train around on my Mac. It was really cool. I wanted to go get my girlfriend and get her to play it and show her. And so, but she didn't sign an NDA, so I can't show her. I cannot show her, unfortunately. That's the right, that's the right decision, Rob. Uh, where, are we, where are we training this time? Did we set a waypoint? Are we actually in Asia? We are. Maybe we should go back over here, because for the last couple of weeks we've been wanting to show this stuff. We have. Can we buy this? Yes, we can. Yes, I'm going to buy that. And you know what? I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this, too. I don't know how much money we have, but... We have a lot less now. We have a lot less oh, money. It says we're full. Yeah, we might have had some of the uh, the dev gift action on our oh. build here. Okay. Does this go faster if I click it or anything? That's only Doc's time machine. Tip, this is how fast the train is currently going. There you go. Thanks, Valerie. Valerie, come on! What are your observations as you've been going through feedback for, for the Steam build? Is it what you thought it would be, porting from mobile and like going from port to rebuild and reconstruct and polish? Um, wow, that's a, it's a really good question and it's it's Thanks. kind of tough to answer. I, I think, I think it was really easy to look at Tiny Rails and see some of the really high level obvious things that we would need to change to make it an appropriate PC game. But until you actually have a build up and running and you're playing it in the way that your players are going to be playing it, some of those things don't become obvious until you're, you know, you're sitting in front of that monitor instead of playing on your phone and you're actually set up with a mouse and keyboard actually uh, experiencing the game that way. So I, I would definitely say that we discovered a lot of things as we were playing the game and I think that's why um, we're working as hard as we are to polish it up and really try to make sure that it's, uh, it's being presented the best way it can. So that, that is the answer I'll give to that question. The question I've been dodging to build proper suspense for anybody that was late tuning in is, uh, talk about that Wicked Press Kit we saw 
on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and give me one, is the common response. Uh, I know back when we had initially been talking about Steam Tiny Rails, not too long after we, we, we got greenlit, uh, I was talking about the notion of doing you know, mock-up Super Nintendo style boxes for Tiny Rails. Uh, inspired by, uh, we, we get gamer blocks here at the studio mm -hmm. on the regular and we have like little little swag items in a little swag shop and you earn points as an employee and you can then trade in these points to get these little swag items and frequently they'll put Steam games in there and it'll just be like a mock-up SNES style box and, and your Steam code and I thought well wouldn't that be a really fun thing to send out with uh, with press copies of, of Tiny Rails for reviewers or maybe have signed ones we could give to fans for contest rewards, that kind of thing. And um, when Rob came on board, we really ran with that idea. Rob has some experience doing mock video game boxes uh, for other projects he's worked on. <laughs> and, uh, I'm a bit and, of a mocker. And between uh, Rob and, uh, and uh, company CEO Jeff Owens, Evans, and uh, Tom Duncan, who is our lead artist on, on Tiny Reels, you guys knocked out a really amazing looking fake box, which is right there. So you can see uh, we've got the parody Tiny Titan logo at the bottom there. Uh, we have our screenshots and our description on the back there. It's going to be really hard to see in the small window on Twitch. It would be very difficult but to see. But that's okay. Uh, and then Rob thought he'd take it a step further, and Rob would say, well, wouldn't it be awesome to have a manual for the game? So Rob, uh, largely with the input of Jeff and not really a lot of any other... Well, we passed it around the stuff. entire office to see what people thought about the upgrades and get some thoughts about the art and the layout and stuff, but it was really... Uh, I, I guess I did the initial pass on it and then Jeff decided to reboot himself. After after the guts were there, he just wanted to make sure that we had some muscle wanna, on them. Do you want to turn that around again? I don't know if anybody will be able to see much of anything because uh, of how small we are on the picture in picture here, but this is actually, um, it's really a quite beautiful full color manual that has full color artwork in it and uh, it's, it's like full glossy pages so it's very much like an old SNES instruction manual. and. Um, and it, it turned out incredibly well. Like we're all really, really excited about the quality of that. I think it'll really do a good job of of building some interest in the game for us. And I know we've talked about even potentially having, you know, at some point when we have a merch shop on our website, which yeah. we hope to do in the very near future, we talked about the possibility of being able to sell them or perhaps doing uh, autographed ones. We talked about being able to do like a special edition of Tiny Reels that would get you the package and maybe a, a, a Steam key with it. So we have to examine the cost and that kind of thing and make sure yeah. that it makes sense for everybody involved. But uh, if there's interest out there and that's something that our fans would be looking for, uh, we're definitely uh, considering it. One of the details that we're being asked to point out is at the back there's a page for all your game notes. Indeed. So right there. So if you want to write down your favorite train build in there. Or your favorite waypoints. Your or recipe or... for uh, now, making cash. What I have here is not a box of donuts. That makes me sad. Yeah, it is almost snack time. Well, it's all taped up again. What happened here? Look at this, we can't it's even live get television, ladies and gentlemen. Live television. We can't uh, script this. Oh, I, th I think they just retaped it. But in this box... <laughs> in this box... Here we go. No. Almost. Almost. We have... Oh, wow. That's all the manuals. We have a bunch of these manuals. Now... The second question and part of that, or statement that we talked to, to start the discussion on these boxes was, how do I get one? Like you said, if it's cost effective for us to sell them later, we may do that. Can I ask you a question first? Yeah. Who had the staple all of this? Uh, thankfully, our wonderful printing service. Oh, friends. awesome. Okay. Yeah. We were fairly confident that somebody in the studio was going to have to take on the staple duties. Not the case. Not the case. Not the case. Now, the box folding. And the gluing of the one edge. <laughs> yes. We're going to have to find someone who's really good at arts and crafts. Different story. Yeah. So, these are going for reviewers, very specifically. We would love to make them available for sale right now. They do cost, actually, a fair penny to do the book, the box, this box protector. And there's a couple goodies that we're including inside as well. And that, that obviously has a, 
a dollar value on it. So we're really targeting reviewers. Now people say, how do I become a reviewer for you? Sure. Well, we basically want to see people that have established channels and there's a few, there's a few different criteria. A, we want to see how many subscribers or your readership or your viewership. We also want to see the frequency in which you contribute. So are you posting videos or articles uh, in, in a frequent manner, not just like once a month when a new game comes out? And what is your voice? You know, does your voice fit the Tiny Titan brand? Is it an E for everyone fun kind of voice? Uh, and are you into the same kind of stuff that we are? So it's a various combination. You don't need a million subs on your YouTube channel to get one of these if you want to be a reviewer. You don't uh, need to post every day, but it's kind of a, a magical combination of all things that make sense. And then we just really want to kind of partner with the right people going forward so that it's not just Tiny Rails in this case, it's the next release that we have or the next release after that. Or if there's another version of Tiny Rails down the road, like 2.0 or whatever, whenever we hit that magic number, there could be a different version that comes out for that. So. Um, if you are interested in becoming a reviewer, hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. We'll give you an email address and we'll kind of take it from there. But we would love to get these in the hands of people that want to help us grow, that want to see more of Tiny Rails, and that want to see more games from Tiny Titan. Yeah? What do you think? Uh, I think that's great. And uh, I'd really like to hear from more of our community. We, we know there's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of people out there doing content for Tiny Rails already. And we're very, very appreciative of that already. Uh, but uh, we'd love to see that community continue to grow. And if this is something that can help encourage that, then we're, we're really happy to see it. And I want to thank everybody who's already reached out uh, to inquire to be a part of it. We have a lot of cool podcasters and YouTubers and, and journalists that have similar yet diverse kind of audiences by virtue of a different medium. So it's going to be cool to get this in their hands. And there's people as far as Australia and, and the UK and, of course, uh, in North America that are going to receive this. So that's, that's pretty cool. I'm getting a message from Meg that says there are snacks out right now. There are snacks. We have snack o'clock around here, and uh, it always happens to be when we stream. It does. It's probably not the worst thing in the world. All right. Um, what's the typical dev cycle or update cycle for games, and will that get shorter if Tiny Rails on Steam does better? Uh, I don't know if there is a typical dev cycle for games, uh, to be honest. Um, there are... I think the answer varies a lot depending on the type of game it is too. So I mean, uh, we have certainly turned around uh, any mobile titles in you know four or five months, uh, but there's also AAA games out there that take upwards of you know two three years to produce. So uh, so the, the the depth of the game has a lot to do with it, uh, the size of the team. The amount of money involved, it costs an incredibly large amount of money to make video games, which I don't know if anybody outside of the industry really truly appreciates. Uh, yeah. That's certainly something I really didn't have an appreciation for until uh, I started working here, and then it was kind of like, wow, this is actually quite a lot of money. Um, so, uh, so those are all factors that come into play there. Um, if you look at Dash Quest, uh, Dash Quest took about a year to develop, probably a little longer. But that was also uh, Jeff working as largely a one-man operation, sort of doing it uh, when he had the time, taking a little bit of time in between uh, pushes on uh, on devving it and, and that sort of thing as well. Whereas something like Tapsmith took us four or five months because we we just buckled down and we largely had a two-man team on that. With a couple of other folks coming in towards the end to help out with it. Bill DeCat says he has the recipe for dev cycles. Mm -hmm. He says, it's uh, think up an idea, code it for a while, it is broken, code more, deal with the feature creep, code more, then company gets bought out and dev is cancelled. Uh, other than that last part for us, that is not, uh, that's not completely untrue, not completely inaccurate. It's tough to know when you're done. Um, I think you initially start with, you initially start a, a game with a laundry list of things that you want to get in that game. And honestly, a lot of the part of the process of making the game is slowly removing the features that just don't fit or you won't have time for or just have a scope for what you're trying to do. And inevitably, you'll, you'll build something, get it in the game, play with it, and just find that it isn't what you thought it was going to be. Uh, something isn't as fun as you thought it was going to be or something just isn't presented to the player the way that you thought it was or maybe the game you thought you were making turns out to actually be something a little bit different and you have to kind of modify your design as a result so so it's a it's a complicated process 
Now, for Tiny Rails, there's seemingly been updates almost every week, since at least I've been here. <laughs> at least I've been updating my app every week, and there's... Not, not by design. <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is that normal? In, in what are these updates really it, it, mean? It really depends. Um, we've, we've been doing a lot of experimenting with car bundles, and there's been a lot of background stuff that's gone into uh, making that work in a way that isn't completely uncomfortable for the player. So, uh, so we were pushing a little more frequently than we normally would, but typically we work on a two-week dev cycle okay. with Tiny Rolls updates. So typically we'll, we'll do dev work for two weeks, push a release, another two weeks, push a release. And then we generally do a major content release around every month and a half to two months. Get it? Get it? I think it's just on the edge here. I think you're right. I didn't quite. There it is. With some office buildings in front of it. Um, I know we talked about it a little bit last week, but just to kind of tease our mobile players who have eaten up a lot of the Japan content already because they were excited, what is the next area that we're going to unlock and when might that happen? Not that we don't have a Steam release going on or anything like that. The next area is somewhere. Sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Is that all you're giving us? That's all I'm giving you. Honestly, I honestly don't know which area. The, the honest answer is um, we're we've been working on some bug fixes and content for for uh, for the mobile version of the game, but Steam is really taking the lion's share of our time right now, so we are kind of focused on that. Um, in the next week or so, we will definitely be taking a look at mobile and and slotting things in to get towards that next uh, major update. Uh, I don't expect that to be much later than it typically would be. Like, I think you'll still see that around, uh, probably at this point, I think probably around late August. Late August. Mid to late August lately. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're still roughly on track for that. And I think we have a couple of areas that we're working on. So there's basically what I would say probably three key, key areas, which is either South America, Africa, or Australia. Kind of like the Southern Hemisphere continent. Yeah, right? those are... Antarctica... Those those are three of the areas that we haven't done yet. We also haven't done uh, Middle East as of yet. Okay. Uh, so those are those are probably I say our last four major geographical areas. I know we're looking at uh, getting some stuff like Alaska into the game because uh, Alaska currently isn't a playable area, and it would be a nice bridge to uh, to Russia. Same with Hawaii. For some players, Hawaii is not in the game. Uh, Greenland isn't in the game. So there, uh, Iceland isn't actually in the game either. Now that I think about it, so. Um, so there are little spots on the map that we may still want to fill in. You mentioned Antarctica. I think it would be really fun to, to do Antarctica in some way. Um, I don't know that we'd necessarily see a wide range of locations there, but I think sure. we can work that into the gameplay in a fun way and maybe get some quests or uh, maybe have, a, have a, a special personality who's hidden down there that might be able to do uh, some, some story-related stuff with you. Uh, we've talked about other places appearing in existing maps. I think it was like, what was it, Grand Forks in Nebraska came up one week on Titan Twitch. Will you include this? It's right outside of Lincoln. Uh, I, I believe that was the question we got. Now, once we unlock the world, we've obviously talked about other fun places and stuff and extrapolated what could be in Tiny Rails. But is it as simple as maybe going back and revisiting some of these areas, maybe at least on Steam where you can get in a little bit deeper and adding? more uh, it may be like to me if we're going to do that I'd want to know why we were doing it and I don't think that saying just because we want blank place to be in the game is necessarily a good enough reason okay uh, I think there needs to be a gameplay reason tied to that and like the success of the worldwide company has opened up other spots for your train to travel yeah or, or as I said you know we talked about Antarctica and maybe having a, having a hidden character down there or Maybe having quests that need to be related to that area. Um, maybe we work back in some areas that have gone unvisited already by yeah by weaving uh, new quest content into them. So I got to tell you, one of the things that we'll be doing in, in conjunction with the Steam release is releasing some dev diaries. Yes. Which is I've been able to interview some of the the key team on Tiny Rails and ask them their thoughts on the game. You know, with regards to story and art and collecting trains and Steam features on uh, as well. And talking about what everybody would like to see in the game or where they'd like the trains to go has been really fascinating. Because all these interviews are done like insular of each other. So nobody knows what each other has said. And that's kind of the fun when you watch everything come together. 
So it, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is and, and hear what people uh, have to say about where the team would like to see the game to go. But it should get everybody a good snapshot too of all the stuff that we want for this game. It's not just us simply rolling out content and continents and countries because it's on the map and we have to fill it in. We're very much doing things that we want to do in a way that we want to do them based on the reactions to the crowd. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I, I know a lot of people are eager to say, okay, well, what's, what's after Earth? Do you go under the sea? Do you... Uh, First of all, we should be flattered that they want to see what's after Earth, meaning that, they're going to sure. play all of Earth. But, but we have a lot of people say under the sea. I know, like Bill DeCat just said that. I know that's something I've certainly suggested before. Um, into Space is another one. A lot of people like the idea of maybe to an alternate dimension, who knows. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, what I think is we, we have a pretty big sandbox to play in already. So what else can we do with that sandbox that we're not already doing? And uh, I think that's something that, that for me, like I, I want to challenge the team to to think about that as well, and not just worry about okay, well, wh what other track can we put in front of your train? Um, what can we do with the track we've already laid, for lack of another train pump to use? But I think there are, uh, I think there are definitely things that we can be doing with the existing tools and assets that we have, and, and I think there are some interesting ways we can look at reusing that stuff and making it fresh for players at the same time. I think as always, we'd love to hear what people want to see. I mean, we, we take a lot of our cues from what people say, and it's usually not the, the one voice in the room that we listen to, but when a lot of people suggest something, we try to explore it at least and determine why it's a bad idea to do. And if we can't come up with a lot of those reasons and we find ways for it to catch on, then we like to put the tiny tiny spin on it and see what we can do. So let us know what you think and what you'd like to see as always. Um, uh, Bill the Cat thinks that After Earth is a terrible movie. Oh. Well, he's not a... Uh, he's not incorrect. Is that the Will Smith movie? Jaden Smith? I believe it is. All right then. There's also is a battlefield earth. That's what, yeah, yeah, based on the Scientology. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Where, we, where all of them are like filmed on a 45 degree angle because they're tall giants. I don't know if we'll ever have post-apocalypse tiny worlds. It's a little apocalyptic grass. It's a little. It's a little dark for Apocalypse pony. <laughs> no. You're singing again. I am singing again. I can't help. I'm in a songful mood today, as I was greeted by your chorus this morning. <laughs> So, as we talk about the Steam, the state of the Steam release, why don't you talk about the state of the team as they get ready for the release of the game? What's that like for the team? What's it like for the team? Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, honestly. We're, um, we're in full-on crunch mode right now, so all of us are here 12 hours a day. Uh, there's been time spent on holidays over the last couple of weeks, so there'll be time spent on weekends over the next couple of weeks uh, as well, I can pretty much guarantee as we get to, towards making this thing uh, happen, but it, it very much is uh, a, sort of a rallying thing, right? The whole, the whole team rallies around the idea of the game and, and how strongly we feel about the game and how strongly we feel about making it an amazing game for people to play on, on the PC. This is uh, Tiny Titan's first Steam release and that isn't lost on us. That's a very important thing to us. We know that we don't get another chance to do our first Steam launch ever again. So uh, I think everybody on the team understands that and they, they take pride in that. That we get to be, you know, those five or six people in the studio who get to do that for the first time. So, so that's a big deal and we take it really, really seriously. But uh, we're working really, really, really hard to try and get every last ounce of polish we can in the game and, and make it awesome. Now, I didn't hear officially, but was your car towed? Was my car towed? No. Good. I had, a, I had an extremely healthy... Uh, uh, price to get out of the, the parking lot today. Bet you did. So to go hand in hand with Glenn discussing how the team is feeling, he drove his car to work yesterday to avoid the downpour of rain. By the way, I'm not used to London, Ontario, even though I'm from here because I lived in Vegas, but now I'm back here. It's true. Uh, it seems to be raining every other day. It's been raining a lot this summer. It's extraordinarily humid and we're getting a lot of rain. Um, I usually walk to work. It's about a 15 minute walk. I love walking to work walk to and from it's uh, it, it just makes me feel good it's a good way to cap off the day too mm -hmm. but it was pouring rain yesterday morning so I drove my car and I parked at the uh, parking garage in the mall across the street a couple of blocks away and uh, then walked home last night at about midnight now why did you walk home last night because I forgot I brought my car around oh okay so I had a I had a healthy uh, 
healthy fare to get my car out of the garage. Over so there. you walked back to work today. I did. Because you realized your car wasn't at home when you woke up. I did. Right. And this is because you're just fried. Yeah, there's <laughs> it's not enough sleep and tons of work. Uh, Brett will probably be back, Bill. Uh, at some point when he's not working 12 hour days trying to answer. He's got too much questions. homework from what I'm There's a lot care. to do right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, I know Brett's a streamer and Brett uh, definitely likes to be in front of the camera talking to people and uh, talking about our games. He's very, very active on our Reddit community. So yeah. uh, no doubt in my mind Brett's going to be back when, uh, when our plates are a little bit less full. Um, I have a game I want to pitch you guys. What's the likelihood we can talk about it on a serious level? Uh, Likelihood is probably not very good, to be honest, and it's not because uh, we don't necessarily think somebody doesn't have a good game idea or that's not a game idea that we would find interesting or fun or entertaining, but um, there's a lot of legal issues that come into play when you're taking unsolicited game ideas mm -hmm. uh, and potential lawsuits and just lots of ugly wrangling that goes along with that kind of stuff. And as a general rule, we have a policy in house that we don't take unsolicited game design suggestions. I wonder if we should do like a public day where we get people to sign a waiver, kind of like a pitch fest. We get to hear their games and see what's what and kind of give back to the community, give them tips and stuff like that for all the local game dev students. And then we kind of get we'll interns see. out of it. We'll see. <laughs> okay, it's just an idea. We'll see. So yeah, again, we appreciate those ideas. Uh, we're excited for people who are excited for those ideas and we hope we wish them all the success, but it's just, uh, we find it's just cleaner if we, if we just say thanks but no thanks to, to those sorts of things. Uh, Tapsmith's got some love on Twitter today. Tapsmith's got love. And there was tons of back and forth on this one, and this will go in familiar territory for you and I from some of the other stuff that we've done. Sure. Uh, Samus, or Samus. Samus. Samus and Master Chief are the two Smiths in the Smithery. Sure. And uh, the people were speculating who would actually win in a fight. Halo, Samus. Halo or Metroid. Samus. Samus? Yeah, undoubtedly. Why? Because uh, Master Chief has a variety of guns at his disposal, but Samus has all kinds of abilities in addition to her gigantic arsenal of weapons. Yeah, but Samus is like a rogue one-person crew. Master Chief is part of an entire army. It's not a question of his. He brings army. the fight. It's not a question of his army versus Samus. That wasn't the. That wasn't when the you take on Master Chief, you get the whole army. No. Yeah. Lies. True story. Lies. Yeah. Ridiculous. Weigh in on that argument, who would win in a fight? <laughs> How do you really feel about Samus? <laughs> I love her. Samus, please call me. <laughs> you love that Zero Suit version of her, don't you? With Metro, or Mega Man, that one picture. That fan, you know what I'm talking about, that fan art where it's Samus and, and Metroid. Well, or the, Samus the, and the Mega Man. Right yeah, yeah. The, uh... T, uh... I can't remember T Turtle. The T Turtle shirt where it's Samus taking her helmet off and Mega Man's like losing his mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, I sent you an email about localization and haven't heard back yet. Did you get the email? Uh, I'm going to pass that one off to Andrew, our QA lead, because uh, Andrew handles localization requests. So uh, we can poke him about that. Um, honestly, we probably did get the email. We've, we've gotten tons of uh, volunteer. Uh, emails regarding helping us with translation stuff, and we really, really appreciate them. I definitely can say that it's it's backward right now. It's it's not a huge priority for us in light of the Steam launch, but uh, we'd like to slowly start filling in the blanks with our localizations once we're launched on Steam. I think that we're also victims of our own desires at this point, in that we are very active uh, with our community, and we engage a lot of people on Facebook and Twitter, and so we may have been given the impression that we don't have a lot of stuff to do since we're on Facebook and Twitter all the time interacting with people. So ergo, we must have answered or seen your localization email. But we deal with thousands and thousands and thousands of players every day that have questions or comments about uh, any of our games, you know? Yeah, I, I think the fact is our list of things that we want to do in any of our games uh, is always going to be longer than our you know, the number of hours we've got to do it. Which is a good problem to have. I mean, I think it's great that we have so much, uh, 
we can draw on to, to kind of improve the games or, or update yeah. them. Uh, but we really have to pick and choose our fights. Uh, and uh, yeah, right now that, that fight is very much directed at Steam. And, uh, and until we get that one wrapped up, we'll likely be continuing to, to focus there. And, and then we'll take another look at localizations once we've uh, we've had a chance to clear our plates somewhat. But whether it's localization, we do prioritize all the communication that does come in. We try to take care of people that have uh, urgent issues with bugs in their game, yeah. which are support staff. Largely, Andrew can, can take care of because he's a bit of a wizard there with all those backdoor secret codes. And uh, at least that's how it works in my mind. I just say email our support team and uh, I haven't heard any complaints yet, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, we try to help the people that are, are restricted from enjoying our titles kind of first and foremost. And then we try to see what we can do to improve the game from there on. But are you yawning? Is it almost time to quit? Oh, it's been a long couple of weeks. I see that. I love seeing Godzilla and Tiny Rails. But you guys have more secrets in the game. Can you have Waldo from Where's Waldo? I'm sorry, our legal team has advised us that it's not Godzilla. Oh, okay. It is, in fact, Lizard King. Who came up with that alternative moniker? I think I did. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Will we have more secrets in the game like that? Very much so, yes. Uh, I think going forward, you're probably going to see secrets get a little more elaborate because the fact is, uh, Ali, our coder, has a lot more fun making books. Uh, and we want them to be something that people have to work a little bit to define. So I know there's a lot of surface level stuff that's sort of Click this. relatively easy to trip across while you're playing the game now, but we uh, we want to make it uh, definitely a little more involved with, with the new ones we added. But we'll continue adding for sure. Will we go back and add these kinds of secrets to previous areas, or would they only be in new areas? Impossible to say. It really depends on Impossible the Impossible infinite memory. Yes. It depends on the nature of the secret, really. What would Glenn like to see? Would Glenn like us to go back to North America and add a few different secrets so that it balances out against the new areas? Fast ship. I don't, don't really see that as an issue. Okay. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. Some, they, he, this person is asking, will we ever see where's Waldo or where's Wonky or where's Willie? Uh, <laughs> Where, where's gentleman in a striped shirt? Yeah. So Where, where's cat. Peppermint Peter? <laughs> where's Candy Cane Carlos? I, I don't know. I honestly don't. I, 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 I struggle with the difficulty of incorporating a secret like that. Because with something like a Where's Waldo, you would want to be tapping, like, presumably you want to be tapping on when he's hidden or something, but when you got a game that's in motion, it's kind of a tough thing. Well, we have our moments where you have to snap pictures. I am fairly certain that uh, Where's Waldo will not stop out from the right side of the screen and breathe fire and be attacked by helicopters. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. <laughs> um, anyone get tipped the scales? I got it. If you got it, please help me. Last I heard it was bug for players who started before a certain version number. I don't have it either, but I know the theory about how to get it, I think. Okay. Is there, any, sure. is there any truth to tip the scales being bugged? I'm not aware of it being bugged. Uh, it is possible it is, um, but I know that in its design, it was designed to... It was designed to still operate properly for players who had been playing the game before we adjusted it. Okay. So it's possible that that might not be firing off properly, but... Okay, uh, certainly meant Andrew's chiming in on chat, he's saying yes. Yes, it is bugged and they can't get it, or yes, it has been fixed, Andrew. Or yes, will the train ever travel to the left? Or yes, we will be able to take pictures of where's Winky. Oh, he's answering the look up. The train is traveling left, what's wrong with you? I just want to clarify that Andrew... It is bugged. <laughs> okay. Make up your mind. What are we responding to? Apparently it's bugged. So the good news is our QA rep, Andrew, is obviously aware of that already. So nobody can 100% the game right now. That's not countered against progression. It should be. But it's not. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. Impossible to say. I love the new update. Very helpful changes have been made, and they eliminate my need for elaborate written guides that I've been making to organize my cargo hauls. 
elaborate written guides may be my favorite phrase of today. Of, of the Twitch stream? Yeah. Okay. Why is that? <laughs> it's just great. I don't know. Elaborate written guides. What kind of elaborate written guide have you crafted for Tiny Rails? I like that. This is... Is there a question there? Or is no. It? I just thought you might want to comment on the fact that they no longer need elaborate written guides. We're glad that the uh, the additions we've made to <clears throat> cargo maintenance uh, are appreciated and that they are helping people because that's really why we wanted to get them in there. I know there's a few things that are still on our radar that we'd like to adjust with that stuff. Um, uh, our designer, Brett, in particular, is really, really passionate about cargo, making it sensible and making it... He, he's kind of... Uh, he's fixing to be the cargo king. It's a, it's a personal thing for him, so... Uh, so I, I would expect you'll continue to see more things. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're glad that they're working for people. People are appreciating them being there. As much as uh, this individual doesn't like elaborate written guides, that's the kind of stuff I like when making games. We were talking about this today at our daily meeting too, the need for games. And hence the manual. Yeah, but we when we grew up gaming, writing stuff down, whether it's passwords, where you can't tell if O's are zeros, or like drawing out maps, or building your own pen and arrow. That was kind of part of the fun. Uh, Build a Cat's asking about the little capsules and getting new cars. Are they important, or are they just pretty graphics? I'm not sure I completely understand that question, but yeah. uh, what I will say, Bill, is there are two different, uh, sorry, there's three, I guess. There's three different colored capsules available in the gumball machine. Hmm. Uh, if you draw a red and white capsule, it's a common car. If you draw a gold capsule, it is a rare car. And if you draw a purple capsule, it is a special car. That being said, special cars are only available uh, during uh, periods where uh, where car models are available. Any plans to change that? There may be. Impossible to tell. Possible to say. Possible to say, possible to tell. You have any other thoughts before we end the stream? We are out of content. If anybody else has questions on uh, uh, Twitch, we take them. I'll check Twitter one more time just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Here we, go. we have 20 notifications. The machine as it stands does not empty. We actually did have some talk about doing that, putting a limited number of capsules in there and having it empty. I don't think I like that because in, in the mobile game you can infinitely get cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the chance for getting rare cars is not affected by staying in a single instance of the machine. Uh, it's a 10% chance by default uh, across the board anytime you do a roll. Um, the only thing that would affect that is there is the rare roll where you're guaranteed a rare car. Nothing new on Twitter. Everything's kind of more of the same mode, so that's good. Hey, everybody wanting to see Steam. Henry Rails. Steam, what that looks like. Soon, soon, my friends. What are the odds next week, Glenn? Stay thirsty, my friends. What are the odds next weekend? I don't always get asked about Tiny Rails on Steam. But when I do. But when I do, I give an evasive answer. No, I, uh, based on the plan we've got in place, uh, I think it's very likely that we'll see some Steam action. Next week? Next week. Like 51%? I don't want to put a number on it, but I think it's likely. Possible to say. Yes. Possible to say. Let's put it this way. If we're going to be releasing the game on August 8th, I think it's extraordinarily likely that you'll see it. Okay. All right, then. Um, Bill DeCat has follow-up questions. You want to tackle those? I already did. Okay. All right, then. So, from myself, Rob McCallum, uh, thanks for watching another Titan Twitch. Glenn Stanway. Thanks very much, everyone. We appreciate you hanging around and asking us questions. And we will see you next week. Same Titan time, same Titan channel. Indeed. All right. Good pun, Bill. Cheers.